Hi everybody, it's Dr. Magnifico from Jared'sful Vet and Polly.com. This is Penelope. Penelope came to me um, on Monday, so she has been here for two days. She was being fed um, as part of a feral cat colony, so she is part of a colony that one of our clients is um, helping to take care of. She was actually behind a KFC, so any of you corporate KFC people who want to support a kitten, <laughs> please give us a call. Um, she is about uh, about six weeks old. We we age kittens really by their weight. So she's about a pound and a half, which is probably somewhere between six and eight weeks old. She is a little undernourished, so she came to us a little undernourished. She's actually getting much better. So she has a pretty bony spine and pretty bony pelvis. Here's her pelvis, so you can feel all of her bones. She has been sitting in a cage, that's her cage, for about two days, and she has been eating nonstop for two days. So she's been resting and eating. The reason that she was brought to us is that she has a deviation in her left carpus. So this is her left front leg, and she's got a deviation that she shouldn't have. That's our friend Buddy, he's gonna sing. <laughs> so, I am doing a little video on how to splint a kitten. So here is her elbow, here is her shoulder, and then here is her wrist, which has motion in it that it shouldn't have. When she came in initially, her wrist was really sort of at a 90 degree angle. So it should be at a 180 degree angle. She comes straight down off of her elbow. So she needs some support in her wrist. So this is a video on how to make a splint for a kitten. Kittens are really good. There's an old saying in veterinary medicine, if you put a bag of broken bones in a kitten in a room and you shut the door and leave it alone, they'll heal. And we have some pretty, pretty amazing kitten stories of that. So here is her splint. So Kate's gonna hold on to her. Her splint is, at, is right here. So she's got two halves to her splint, which is a tongue depressor. So here's a tongue depressor, which is really lightweight wood that I've cut in half and then I round the ends and then I put vet wrap on. So it's nice, it's got some support. And that needs to go on both sides of her wrist. So that's providing her splint. Um, the, the trick to splints in kittens is, is twofold. One, you need to bridge the gap where that break is or where that deficiency is. And then two, it needs to be light enough that they can manage it. So for, for an already um, undernourished, undermuscled kitten, I can't make this so heavy that she can't get around with it. So that's the trick. So Kate's gonna hold her and get all of her stuff together. If this was a broken bone, which it really probably isn't, you wanna maintain so I have someone holding the leg to maintain it so that she's not flipping and flopping around and making it worse. So Kate's gonna kind of hold her leg for me while I get everything ready. So here's her old bandage that we're gonna get rid of. They need a bandage change anytime it's wet, anytime there's bleed through, so anytime it looks wet or dirty, or if they get litter on it, it has to be kept clean. Um, if you've got an open fracture, then you need to change it probably every day. She doesn't have any open fractures, so we're trying to do it every two days. So this is, um, this is just um, bandage tape. I'm splitting it in half to make stirrups for her. So we put stirrups across the joint. The stirrups really hold that bandage from slipping off of her leg. So we put it the length of her leg. So, and then sometimes we put a piece of wood in between. And then I'm putting her splints on. So the stirrups go on and then the splints go on. The splints have to go really from elbow to toe. So I'm gonna this up just a little bit. Ideally, I want her toes to be sticking out of her bandage. I know, I'm sorry. And then she gets rolled gauze. Um, cotton, it's okay, it's okay. So I'm trying to sandwich her, the break or the dislocation in between the two splints and then lightly roll it on. The, the, the biggest problem occurs when it's too tight. So I'm just sort of lightly rolling this on. Ideally, I wanna do two layers and I'm sandwiching that um, leg in between the splint. And it's come too far down, so we gotta go back and do it a bit. So it does, it just takes practice. It's practice in holding and practice in placing. I know, I know, I know. It's okay, it's okay. Without so much pressure that it makes it painful. Um, you know, as, as you get practice, you get more efficient. Um, sometimes if it's an older cat, we have to sedate them. I really try not to sedate them um, because it just, you know, it adds mostly expense. It's okay, it's okay. 
I know, sweetheart. It's okay. It's okay. She's sort of purring. <laughs> so I need to go above the elbow. And I notice you're layering it around. You're I do. Not right because of pressure right 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 i'm just kind of loosely wrapping it so it provides support you really want to do no more than two layers because every time you add a layer you add weight so that's the cotton and then at this point just to keep for for weight can you hold her leg for me and then the stirrups go back up so i'm twisting it on its side so the stirrup sticks and that's really what holds it from falling down and then it's just a layer of that wrap buddy buddy so then it's just a layer of vet wrap. This vet wrap has elastic in it. So this is where you really have to be careful that you don't put it on too tight. So I'm pulling and then letting it fall back into place. So I'm pulling it, taking the stretch out and then wrapping it. So her toes are still sticking out. That's what we want as ideal. And the splint is on either side of it. So this will just give her wrist a little bit of support that it doesn't have otherwise. And that's it. You know, there's this kind of really, the secret recipe is getting it above and below the joint. So you, the break is right here or the dislocation is right here. So I'm above the joint on both sides and then keeping it light so she can still kind of walk around with it. And then the last thing to do is to put a date on it. What's the date today? 21st. 8.21. So we, I put the date on just so I know how long it's been on. If she starts chewing at it, just so a, a pet who's chewing at the bandage is chewing at it primarily because it's bothering them. So you have to change the bandage. They're trying to tell you something. It shouldn't hurt. You know, it's heavy and it's cumbersome, but it shouldn't hurt. If she's biting at it and she's trying to get at it, there's a problem and you have to go take the bandage off and address the problem. Don't just leave it on. Cats especially will chew their leg off to get a bandage off, so be really careful. Um, and then just make sure you're using litter that won't clump, so she's actually got newspaper litter in there so that it won't get into her bandage and, and wick up her leg. Um, and then you just keep an eye on it. And we change it every two or three days, but she just needs a little bit of support. And if you get swollen toes, <laughs> So the reason that we leave the toes exposed is so if they swell, you know you've got the bandage on too tight. So use your other leg as your reference. And as long as these toes aren't swollen, it means the bandage is not too tight. So that is putting a splint on a kitten. Kittens are really easy. Just put them in a cage, keep their bandage clean and dry, keep everything accessible. So she's got her bed, her litter box, her food and her water, and that's it. She also has a big sign that says she's not vaccinated for rabies. So she's only handled by people who, um, who are already vaccinated and then keep an eye on her and do bandage changes as you needed. If you have any questions, you can find me at Jarrett'sville Vet or you can ask me at polly.com. So give little Penelope a wish, a well wish, and, and please take care of your kittens. They really will heal. I, I have people telling me all the time that they've got a broken leg, they've got a bad eye, they've got blah, 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 and therefore they should be euthanized. And it's just wrong. They will heal. Just give them a chance. Um, quiet, small cage, let them rest. They are fine in a small cage and things will heal. Call me on, get me on polly.com if you have any questions. Thanks.